Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Graboids, which were a fictional invertebrate species that were featured as the primary antagonist of the Tremors franchise. Now, the creatures were initially known to only have a single life cycle, but with the progression of the film series, it was revealed that they actually went through a few stages of life, beginning as dirt dragons, which was their juvenile form after hatching. They then grow into the underground dwelling Graboids, changing into a Shrieker that has two legs and is able to walk, and transforming once again into its final stage with a tail and two wings named the Ass Blaster. For the purposes of this video, we are only going to be dealing with the creatures featured in the first film. The Graboids were depicted as subterranean creatures that resembled gigantic worms with long serpent-like bodies. At full maturity, they were known to measure up to 10 meters in height and were roughly 2 meters wide, weighing in at an estimated 15 to 20 tons. Graboids are essentially hatched from eggs laid by the Ass Blaster, which is introduced later in the series and is the final stage in its life cycle. Carbon dating has revealed that the eggs were able to lie dormant for up to 300 years, which explained why their sightings were quite rare, though the species is believed to have existed on Earth for a couple hundred million years. The eggs then hatch to reveal dirt dragons, which are much shorter and more compact than the adults, though they already typically have the same set of jaws and mandibles. It's explained that these baby graboids also have a row of armored scales on their backs for protection, which is shed before they fully mature. The creature is essentially wrapped with a thick skin of muscle, which is required to manipulate its external spines. Its ability to lift its upper body in the air, as well as bear the weight of the soil through which it moves, suggests that it contains a semi-rigid internal structure. The creatures were also believed to move through the ground by propelling themselves with their surface spines and the fluid movement of their bodies. In the films, it's revealed that the Graboids have no eyes due to the fact that they have no need for them underground. Their heads contain a massive protective beak which is used to push dirt aside and aid in its movement. This beak also opens like a flower to reveal a wide upper jaw and a smaller lower jaw featuring hooked mandibles on either side. With its armored head and mobile spikes working together in unison, the creature can travel through loose soil at high speeds, though they are unable to pass through solid rock. The Graboids also feature three long, powerful serpent-like prehensile tentacles that can reach up to three meters in length, which remain retracted in the creature's throat till it has need of them. The name Graboid is even derived from the tentacle's abilities to grab its prey and pull it into the creature's stomach. Each of the three appendages feature a mouth and teeth of their own, and at times appear to be autonomous as they can be seen hissing and moving independently. Apart from being used to pull victims in, the tentacles also have the ability to sense subtle vibrations within the earth. Their hide is thick and leathery, with a rough texture which gives them a reptilian appearance. Their size also lends them immense physical strength as they are seen to be capable of toppling mobile homes, smashing through brick walls and even pulling entire vehicles underground. Though they are capable of astonishing feats when in pursuit of prey, it's believed that they must spend most of their time in a dormant state to conserve energy and recover from these massive bursts of activity. The Graboids were shown to be ravenous carnivores and indiscriminate eaters, with a diet that includes but is not limited to sheep, horses, humans, as well as other Graboids. As mentioned before, due to the fact that they lack any eyes, they're known to hunt by sensing seismic vibrations, which are produced by sounds and movement. These sensors can also be used against the creatures, as their sensitivity to sound also forces them to retreat from loud explosions, which cause them a great deal of pain attributed to a sensory overload. This is the same reason that they prefer not to hunt during rainstorms, which produce thousands of minor deafening shockwaves. Unless your name is Bert and you're holed up in a rec room, I'd strongly advise against going one-on-one -on -one with a Graboid in any capacity. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for the lot of you who suggested we take a look at the Graboids from Tremors. If you'd like a video covering all the different stages and forms of the Graboids, or you have a suggestion for another topic, please don't hesitate to let me know. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.
broom, didn't you, you bastard? <laughs>